Hey, uh, wow. Hi, uh. I like this room. Oh, thank you. How's everybody doing? Good? All right. All right. Oh. There's so many of you. Wow. Good stuff. So we'll start by me asking you a few questions and then we'll open it yeah. up. Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. So thank you. Okay. So of all the roles you've played, which one do you most relate to and oh. why? Um, wow. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, whenever you're playing a role, you uh, find different things that you're going to be able to relate to. Um, and the longer you play a role, obviously, the more you get to know the character or something like that, you're going to uh, definitely find different things and explore different things that you'll be able to relate to, as you say. Um, if I had to pick one, I did a film called Son of Rambo, um, where I played an older brother. And I could relate to that a lot because um, it was kind of the flip side. I have an older brother, so I was used to kind of seeing that dynamic play out. Um, so I kind of you know, knew that life a lot. Um, and then with things like Gossip Girl, obviously, it was like six years we were doing that show, so you kind of go through everything, kind of bump into every circumstance, every situation. So with that, there's a lot of things you can relate to. But I mean, that was, uh, was a bit of a crazy world that that show was set in, so, you know. And what was it like being in Gossip Girl? Um, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, I mean, I moved to New York to do that show when I was 19 years old. So, I mean, in some way you can kind of imagine what that was like. Um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we worked with fantastic people, kind of a group of, you know, young, young actors all moving to New York together and, uh, and doing that. So it was, uh, we were all thrown into that experience kind of, you know, with, with, our, with our gang. But it was, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And how does living in New York compare to living in the UK? Um, it's, I mean, you can't really, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, it's, New York's an amazing place. There's no place like it on, on the planet, you know. People often kind of ask you, can you draw comparisons between London and New York? And you can and you can't. I mean, they're two very, very different places. But, um, I mean, my experience in New York was very specific. I was on a show that kind of gathered a lot of momentum and was quite successful. And, uh, you know, your, your experience of it is very specific in that respect. But, um, what I'd like to do is kind of move back to New York at some point later in my life and experience it in a different way. But, um, you know, home is, is England and uh, it's, um, it's a fantastic place as well, so. And what's your favorite thing to do in New York? In New York, wow. Um, there's so many different things, you know, but uh, whether it's, you know, you can go and kind of disappear um, from the madness of the city and go and chill out in like Central Park, but, uh, I, um, I have very, very good friends there now that I, uh, that I really like to see. So, I mean, it's pretty much the same as anywhere. Wherever I am, if I've got someone that's important to me, I like to go and spend time with them and that would be the favorite, my favorite thing to do there. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things you haven't got enough time for me to tell you. And you're about to start filming for a new TV role, which mm. is very different to Gossip Girl. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna be doing a show called uh, Wicked City, um, which uh, is a crime, thriller slash drama, I guess that's how you describe it. Um, I'm playing a not too nice a guy. I'm playing a, a necrophiliac psych, uh, psychopath. So, uh, it's, it's new territory for me, new territory. You'll be pleased to know. Um, but you know, nonetheless, it's very, uh, it'll be a dark, weird journey, but it'll be, um, it'll be exciting and uh, new, definitely. So I'm gonna be doing that. Um, it's, to give you a bit of background on it, it's 1982 and the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, there's, this, there's this serial killer who's uh, ha haunting the uh, Sunset Strip and um, police are trying to catch him. And you've talked a bit earlier about how experience has helped you in some of your roles. How do you prepare no for a role that. such as this? Yeah, I, I have no experience in that. As I said, you'd be, <laughs> be glad to hear. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm someone who kind of works in terms of, I don't know if instinct's the right word to use, but um, definitely that plays a part. I feel like you get a lot off the page um, and a lot of talking with the people who wherever this idea came from. So for example, with a show, it'll be a showrunner who wrote the first script and 
obviously when there's kind of something, when it's, a, when it's a TV show, there's always kind of a lot of politics involved from down from producers, from studios, uh, from all the execs involved actually, and then the directors and so on and so forth. So it's always a kind of a, a, uh, a discussion, but I mean, you kind of walk in with your idea. I mean, for example, I auditioned for it like three times each kind of stage, you know, and I mean, that's always, it's always what the case is, you know, when you, there's something that's good and of value and you want to put yourself forward for it, you know, you're going to have to fight for it no matter what it is. And, um, you know, you get rewarded, hopefully, with the job. Um, but, you know, from that first moment, you kind of pick up the script and absorb it, you, you, you know, it, it, it grows in your head, you know, the idea grows and, um, and hopefully you turn in a good performance and someone likes it and hires you, you know, so. And one last question from me before we open it out to questions from the audience. Yeah. What is the favourite line that a character you've played has ever said? <laughs> I don't know. I know which one you probably think is. But, um, I don't know. I mean, there were so many that we did on Gossip Girl. I mean, Chuck Bass was great, great, great fun. Don't we get me wrong. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people like him. But yeah, I mean, there's probably... Oh, actually, I'll tell you which one it was. It was, um, it was, it was a Gossip Girl line. And um, I can't remember what season it was. And the thing is, I didn't know at the time, which is quite funny and bad, uh, what a jitney was. And a jitney is a bus that um, you take out from the city to the Hamptons. And it just kind of illustrated what Chuck said. He said, what's a jitney? He was asked, are, are you taking the jitney out? And he said, what's a jitney? Um, and it just illustrated just this guy's world that he lived in. He, you know, no public transport. I have no idea what's going on. It's just limousines all day. And um, so I think for me, that was... Uh, that was a really funny one, but every, obviously everyone loves the catchphrase thing that went out. But, uh, but yeah, that'll be mine. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to open it to questions from the audience. Ellen is going to be coming around for a microphone. So if you've got a question, if you'd like to raise your hand. Yeah, we'll go there. <laughs> I just see a hand. It's a really lame question, but can you just say I'm Chuck Bass in the <laughs> 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 <clears throat> I'm Chuck Bass. Um, <laughs> good fun. Thank you. Just behind you, Ellen. Catchphrases. Yeah, just there. Hi. Hello. Um, because you were like playing Chuck Bass for so long, like yeah. so many years, did you ever see like parts of his character in your everyday life, like coming out and what you were doing? <laughs> Do you know what? It was, it was funny. When we were doing the show, Penn Badgley played Dan on it. He, was, he always said, he goes, eventually you become your character. And I was like, nah, nah, it's all fine. And there's certain things I can't tell you, so I can't go into it. But um, no, I mean, you do and you don't. I mean, no, I, I didn't live like that, no. Um, <laughs> no, there was... Um, I mean, you do things for, you know, 12 hours a day, five days a week, um, and you throw yourself into a certain behaviour and a certain, you know, way of walking, way of talking, everything like that. And I mean, of course, probably, you know, little things you, you, you adapt or you're more aware of certain things because your character is focused on them. But um, no, there weren't, um, well, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, to answer your question, not really, no. Um, and if I was living like that, I don't think I'd tell you. No, I don't think so. I think the guy was a bit of a lunatic, to be, to be honest. I mean, incredibly flamboyant. Um, great sense of style, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, I mean, just the whole kind of back and forth with, um, the, with the Blair character was just, you know, it was a lot, right? It was a lot. So, no, I think I kind of wouldn't... I'd, I'd like to think I wouldn't put myself through that amount of torture. But um, you never know, I mean, right? You never know. So, no, I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I haven't really kind of... I mean, you relate to the characters in a way you have to. You have to find a part that you can connect to. But um, Ed Westwick's very, very different from all of them. Mm. Maybe I'll come back in the future and let you know how much I relate to the serial killer. <laughs> you know? Hopefully not a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, in the fourth row there. Yeah. That is you. There Can you, sorry, do the mic. There's a question that's probably on everyone's lips. Ed, 
Are you single? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Was there a follow-up to that one? I think that's rendered the room speechless. Um, Ellen, just you're right there. Yeah. Um, what do you think you might have ended up doing if you hadn't gone into acting? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I still, it's, it's, I'm saying to someone upstairs, you know, uh, guessing you guys' age is like early 20s, I mean, I really didn't know what I was doing or what I wanted to do when I was that age. I still kind of feel like there's something else or some other area of, that I'd like to explore. Um, I think that's kind of the thing you have to keep, you have to be aware of in life, you know, that there's so much going on out there and we live in a day and age as well where, you know, we're blessed with the ability to, well, hopefully the ability to travel, um, you know, at least it's accessible. Um, and you just never know what's around the corner in life, you know, and I feel like if you've kind of always got an eye on that, you know, you open yourself up to so much more and I was never one of those people, I, I feel lucky because I was never one of those people with parents where it was just like, you have to do this, you have to do that, you should know what you're doing. And look, some people do that and, some, and sometimes it works out and, you know, that wasn't the way I was raised and I'm glad in that respect because I've kind of been able to find my own way. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, rock star, can I say that? Is that all right? <laughs> nah. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm most enamoured and fascinated by people who help people. So whether that's um, doctors or something like that, I mean, I think that's, that's incredible. Unfortunately, I did not do well in GCSE science, so um, it's out of the window. Uh, but yeah, I mean, something like that. When people are, you know, sacrificing themselves or their own, I wouldn't, what, what would we say? You know, their own thing. You know, that's, that's what really gets me. Someone who... Uh, sacrifices a lot to help others. And you have been involved in a number of sort of social action things in the past. Yeah, we were chatting about it, weren't um, we? Could you tell us a bit more about those? Um, yeah, I mean, going back to that, I mean, if you're kind of given a voice, and I mean, so many of us are given voices now through social media and anything, things like that, sorry. Um, you are, you know, you're able to have some sort of an impact maybe on certain issues. Um, and as we were saying upstairs, uh, Kelly Rutherford, who was uh, on Gossip Girl, she um, has had some trouble with um, with um, with her children, with, ha with having con having having the ability to see her children. Um, difficult situation. So I mean, she was asking for um, for help, you know, through uh, through getting a voice, so uh, so the government would listen, so she could uh, have more power with uh, being able to see her kids. So I mean, like things. I mean, there's, there's, there's countless things, isn't there? I mean, like, was it the other day I saw Cristiano Ronaldo gave like five million pounds to, to Nepal? And I mean, there's, there's so many ways people can raise awareness to different issues now, you know? Do you think it's a responsibility of people who have kind of high public profiles to kind of use this to That's engage in sort of positive social good? Yeah, um, I don't know. I felt like maybe at once, maybe once upon a time, I didn't think that. I think when I was younger, I felt like perhaps I was more dare I say it's selfish. Um, yeah, and wasn't really, didn't really adopt that kind of perception, but uh, I feel like maybe, yeah. I mean, if it's something that's kind of critical, you know, but it, I mean, that, it depends on, you know, what your idea of critical is, but I feel like whatever kind of charges you in the moment or charges you in your life to, to, to pursue something or to, to speak up about something. I mean, there is so much that we do need to do more about, you know, but um, yeah, it really, it really just comes down to the individual, I think. Thank you. Um, Ellen, just a uh, lady in the green dress. So you've played a lot of bad boys over your career. Do you prefer that to good guys? If so, why? Um, they always have so much more fun, right? I think that's, uh, I think that's what it is. I, I remember on like, a bunch of jobs, like pe other people who were playing the other roles would come up to me and be like, you're so lucky, what's going on? Because you know? um, usually you get... Um, get some interesting uh, storylines. And also I think it's something to do with escapism, right? Because I'm quite a good boy, I think. Um, and I mean, a lot of us kind of toe the line and, you know, behave as it were. And I think, you know, in, 
in drama, in, uh, in entertainment, if you're, a, if you're a bad character, you kind of get to do the stuff that we don't get to do in real life, usually. Um, so I think that's an attractive thing uh, for an actor. Um, so yeah, I mean, does that answer it? I, I don't know. Is there anything that a character that you've played has sort of done that you'd really have wanted to do in real life? Uh, propose at the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, no, I think that, that, would, that would be up there. Um, the serial killing thing. <laughs> no. no, 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 I'm joking. Um, I am joking, I'm joking. No, I mean, I've, you know, been, uh, been lucky to kind of play different roles where... Uh, where a bunch of, bunch of fun things have happened and, um, yeah, I mean, probably, uh, I don't know, I mean, it's hard to top Chuck Bass as like a character. I mean, the guy just, I was very, very fortunate in that respect. I think, I think our writers on that show had a, had a whale of a time, you know? Um, they really got to kind of just write whatever they wanted, it felt like, but it, um, it was always a, a fun, good thing. And is there anything that you'd ever wanted a character to do because it's something you'd really like to do but can't do in real life? Sorry, say that again. Is there anything that you've wanted a character that you've played to have done that you'd like to do but can't do in real life? Wow. Oh, man. I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't really given it too much thought. But I mean, I have this kind of vision of playing James Bond. I think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> and I don't think I'm going to become a spy. Who knows? Who knows? Current temperature between uh, East and West isn't that good. So who knows? But um, mate, that, that, would be, that would be pretty fun. Thank you. And now all the hands. Um, lady just in the second row there. Uh, putting aside the fact that you're a good boy, what's the maddest slash baddest thing you've ever done in real life? Uh, <laughs> I was at Mick Jagger's birthday party, having tea. No, I, um, yeah, um, where do we make up a, what lie do we tell at this point? Um, no, I, you know I can't answer that, right? <laughs> Next question. Okay. Just in the front row there. Hi. Um, have you and any of your co-stars ever played a prank on each other? And if so, which was the funniest one? Wow. I, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Sorry. I can't think of anything. I'm so sorry. Was the Gossip Girl set quite fun to work on? It was. It was a lot of fun. I mean, you have to imagine that, you know, we were all, um, you know, about 19 when we started doing the show. Um, everyone thrown there together. And I mean, it was. It was very vibrant. I think the main culprit of that was Blake Lively. She was great, great personality, incredibly bubbly, fantastic energy. Um, and I mean, even those days like where, you know, you do get tired after working a, a long, long, long day. Um, she was always one to kind of keep spirits up and whatnot. And uh, New York City is a fantastic place to shoot, but it can be quite, um, it can be quite hectic. Obviously, you know, I mean, it's one of the busiest places in the world, and um, traffic's a nightmare. So um, it was always kind of difficult logistically. Um, so I mean, things like that. When it's uh, when it's a fun bunch, always kind of helped to uh, to make it a little bit easier. But um, but yeah, no, it was a, it was a really good group. Just on the front row right here. Thanks, Alan. If you could live anywhere else in the world apart from London and New York, where would it be and why? Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of Jamaica. Um, I just really, really admire the people. I think uh, the ability to be so easygoing um, and to really kind of, you know, just take pleasure in nature and stuff like that, I think it's fantastic. I really, really love it. I think the beaches are gorgeous. Um, it's difficult to knock the Caribbean like anyway, you know, it's like very chilled out. And when you've kind of spent a lot of time in hectic places to, to find somewhere that is, you know, completely opposite, I think it's, um, it really appeals. So I've, the reason why I say Jamaica is because I've been there a bunch. So that's my reference when I'm thinking of that part of the world. And I just had such lovely times there, so it's that. And 
Could you describe your ideal woman to us? Is she more like Serena or Blair? <laughs> or is she there? What did she say? Oh wow! Your ideal woman. Uh, you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just left. Ellen, just right next to you. So I never get picked. Um, this is new. So if you had to describe yourself in three words, what would you choose? And you only have three words. <laughs> Fun, wild nightmare. <laughs> Nightmare's one word. And just uh, in the third row there, uh, with the blue top. Yep, um, just like to come forward, Ellen. Uh, do you want to stand up so Ellen can see where she's there? Ellen, keep going. <laughs> Um, do you find that? Do you ever find that the elements of your relationships as slash friendships with your co-actors ever come through when you're acting with them? <laughs> yeah, I got told to kind of kiss a little bit less when I was <laughs> I was uh, I was I was dating one of the uh, people I was working with for a while, and uh, yeah, that was one of the uh, one of the, that was one of the notes from the director: stop kissing so real. Yeah. <laughs> uh. After playing such an iconic character on television for so many years, was it difficult to kind of refocus your career after the series finished? Yeah, I think so. It's a very good question. Um, definitely, I think what you kind of have in mind is that, you know, people will associate you with, with, uh, with one character. I hate to use the, use the term typecast or something like that, but, you know, it's always kind of playing at the back of your brain, especially, you know, fairly on and fairly early on in my career, you know, I'm only 27 now. When we finished, I was 20, 25, something like that. Um, I think so. I think you kind of have this desire, at least I did, to really go out there and start doing as much as possible, as, you know, as many different things as possible. Um, and of course, with this business, it's not always up to you. So with that, you're kind of, you've got a little, a little bit of frustration maybe grows because um, you want to do, do more things, you want to... You want to, you've, I guess when you're doing the same thing for a while as well, you kind of get into habits. It becomes a little bit second nature. So whether or not that's the way a character moves, the way a character speaks. Um, and then what you do, it's like becoming a not so good driver. Um, for example, like if I was then to take my driving test again or then play another character, it might be more challenging to adapt new mannerisms or really come up with something genuine, something new, something original. Um, so I think for a while after that, that's something that maybe I experienced. Um, and then it's kind of going back to what you know, things were before and uh, kind of starting again. And it's um, an exciting kind of time. It's an anxious kind of time, definitely, um, because you really have to strip yourself down again and um, get back to what it is you know, as, as being an artist and kind of putting things together and uh, experiencing and absorbing the world for, for, you know, from afresh again, really. Is Chuck Bass the hardest character you'd ever, you'd ever had to say goodbye to? You could say goodbye to? Yeah. No, I was very, very ready. To be completely honest, I was very, very ready. We had um, six seasons, which were just absolutely fantastic. But, um, you know, being an actor, you want to play different roles. That was kind of what I was just saying, um, and do different things. Um, and that's where, you know, that's where you get satisfied. That's where you're satisfied. Um, so to be doing the same thing for what was quite a long time, I mean, towards the end, you're just kind of like, you know, time to move on. Um, but again, we just had such a wonderful time and I'm so, so grateful for that experience. I mean, it's, it's probably the reason why I'm sitting here talking to you guys. Um, you know, so I mean, endlessly grateful to everyone involved. But no, I think it's the, and it, it informs your decisions, decisions in the future right now. Um, so when I'm looking at things, obviously I don't really want to immediately play something that's kind of too similar. And also I wouldn't really want to commit to something that potentially could go for that long. Um, just because I know that formula so well and I know that, you know, I know what it can, uh, what it can lead to. It can lead to a fair bit of frustration and, and, and joy, which is quite a strange thing to experience, but 
that's the truth. So do you prefer sort of acting in shorter things, sort of shorter run series or films now? I love films because you get to go and do something for three months and um, you know, really get to know it, get to know the people you're working with and that's that project and you're focused on that and then when it's done, it's done. I mean, the, the bittersweet is when it finishes, you're hopefully saying goodbye to people. Well, not goodbye, but you know, something's coming to an end that you had a really good time on and you sp and may have spent it with some really imp important people who you care about. Um, so that's the bittersweet of it. But um, in terms of a work um, experience, yeah, that's the way I prefer to do things. And is there a character you'd really like to revisit? That I've, that I've played? Yeah. Oh, no, I feel like, you know, I mean, if you do your... At least if you, if you work the way you want to work, usually you kind of, you don't leave any stone unturned, you know? You ask yourself all the questions, you throw yourself into it, and after that, you know, you kind of put it to bed, and you have to, I feel like, you know? Unless they come and do what Sex in the City did and start asking, do you want to do this movie? But um, no, it's, um, no, I don't feel like I need to revisit anything. Okay, um, right at the back, Ellen. Thanks. Uh, since you describe yourself as fun and wild, I was wondering how do you react when you get hit on by men? When what? Since you describe yourself as fun and wild, I can't hear him. I was one. Since you describe yourself as fun and wild, yeah. I was wondering how you react when you get hit on by men. <laughs> uh, I put out. <laughs> With a smile and a blush, as always. <laughs> you know? Okay, um, Ellen, sorry to make you come. Um, just here. I could probably hear you from there. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just wondering, um, you said, you know, um, you formed some friendships and... and uh, such on the set of Gossip Girl, obviously. Mm. Do you find it easier to maintain friendships after, you know, six years of shooting, or are you kind of happy to move on and it's easier to maintain when you've only been shooting for three months on a film or something? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I mean, I have a great relationship with everyone that we did Gossip Girl with. I think you form an incredible bond when you're, you're a group of young people thrown into something together. You know, I keep, keep saying it, but it's true, you do. I mean, you know, I lived with Chase Crawford for two years, so that was, was a lot of fun. And then, um, you know, I mean, we all hung out a ton throughout the duration of, uh, of doing that show. So, I mean, when you have that kind of bond, I mean, it doesn't... I mean, like anyone, of course, you argue at times, and people have disagreements and everything like that. I mean, that's just what normal people do. But, um, no, I mean, we're, 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 we're very close friends. Obviously, we don't speak as much as we did when we were working together day in, day out. I mean, it's rare that that's going to happen, but... Um, but no, everyone, as I said, has that bond and that friendship's very strong. But yeah, I mean, on films, again, I've got some of the best friends. For example, this is my friend sitting here. Say hello to Freddie, everybody. Um, Freddie and I met on a film. He was, he was, he was, um, he was working on it. So, uh, you know, and he and I are, are good friends. And um, I have a lot, of, a lot of good friends that I've met on films. And, you know, I mean, usually you have, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's been no different in terms of how, how it differs from people I've worked with on a film or people... From a, from a show or something like that. Been very lucky, I haven't worked with too many. <laughs> Hi, Hello. are you um, still pursuing your music career? Um, well, not possibly, not in the same way I once maybe was, but uh, I, I love, to, uh, love to get the guitars out and have a jam with people. Um, I've, got, I've got a number of friends who are very musical and so a friend's uh, gig the other night, which went well. But um, no, I mean, I'm a big fan of music. I love to go and see shows when I, when I have the time and stuff, um, whether I'm in the, in the same place as a, as a band that I like. But uh, no, I think that ship might have sailed a little bit. Who knows? So it's not really a career I, don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I still don't know how I feel about people who um, do the crossover thing. Um, if, that's, if I'm being genuine, that's just like, because I ha could have maybe kept something going for a little bit longer whilst doing um, 
the acting thing and doing Gossip Girl, and I just kind of, something didn't feel right about it. So, but I mean, so many people now are doing, doing it all. So it's each to their own. If it makes you happy, do it. So. So in line with the music thing then, if you had to pink, pick three artists or bands that everybody should give a listen to, who would you pick? Rolling Stones, The Doors, and Tupac. <laughs> Can I have four and throw Eminem in there as well? I'm a big fan. Yeah, just, uh, just along, Ellen. Yeah. Um, did you have a Chuck Bass outfit, which was your favorite? Ooh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> pajamas all day. The guy was just comfortable, you know. That's what it was about. Yeah, I think the silk, silk pajamas and robes was a good thing. Oh, and it was a pair of slippers with like a skull and crossbones on. They, they, they're in the forefront of my mind. Did you get to keep anything? I got to keep said? absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's heartbreaking. Apparently, what they do is they, because you can only imagine the, the, the wardrobe budget, budget on Gossip Girl was just ridiculous. I mean. That's where most of the money went um, per episode. Um, so uh, what they do, Warner Brothers, who, who were the studio behind it, I guess they take the stuff at the end and stick it all in a big, uh, a big factory somewhere and they try to hire it out to other productions or use it on other productions to kind of spread the cost. So uh, if you see some outrageous pyjamas popping up on other shows, you'll know originally who they were for. And did you try and sneak anything out or was it just a blanket ban? I did, but I failed. <laughs> They were pretty, it was pretty full on, you know? What were the pyjamas you went for? Huh? What was it the pyjamas that you went for? Um, I think I tried to get like a seersucker suit out of there a couple of times. But everything <laughs> was so expensive. It was like they were going weekly shopping at um, Ralph Lauren and stuff like that. And it was just like, as I said, like the wardrobe budget was ridiculous. Okay. Um, it's in the blue top there. <laughs> Would you ever consider directing, apart from acting? Yeah, I, I'd love to do that. Um, I was flirting with the idea of, of doing an episode of Gossip Girl but towards the end, but I, um, it, it just never kind of materialised. Um, but I, I would love to. I think that's a real... I mean, it's the full, full experience. You know, you kind of get to plan it from start to finish and it really becomes your baby. And I've got a lot of director friends and I mean, it takes up a huge chunk of their life, obviously, because it is their baby, as I say. And, but I mean, it just feels, it feels wonderful. I mean, you kind of, from every aspect, from working with actors to developing, you know, visions for wardrobe, visions for sets and kind of really kind of tailoring the whole vision of, of, of whatever it is you're doing. Um, I would love to do that and I definitely see it as an area I'd like to explore. Um, also, when I'm thinking about it, I find it quite nerve-wracking to think about it as well because um, there's, just, there's just so much going on. But no, I mean, why not? You know, it's good to be challenged and I think that would challenge me and, yeah, it would uh, be amazing. Okay, just the lady on the front there. Um, what do you think about the recent general election? Uh, <laughs> Do I have to be careful here? Um, yeah, I... <laughs> Do you know what? It's probably really bad, but I'll be really honest, I didn't vote, and I've never voted, which is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. I, uh, well, yeah. I mean, you know, I just didn't. But um, it's not that I don't care about it, which, although it kind of shows that I don't. No, I, um, how do I feel about it? I feel... Good. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I'm gonna be judged here, you know, so. I don't know, I don't know. I don't think, hello, Is, what do you think? You tell me. Yeah, um, just that in there, good job. Um, Bar Wicked City, what other roles do you really are looking out for? Any roles that you're like, yes, I really want that. What kind of roles would you want to play in the future? Yeah. Um, well, I was very, very excited about, um, well, I'm very excited about this one that I'm going to be doing um, because it is something very new to me. I think the whole style of it, um, 1982 on the Sunset Strip is incredibly uh, cool, uh, exciting time, it, well, at least it was on that, uh, you know, in, in that part of the world. Um, 
So, I mean, for me, that's going to be something um, which I will really, really look forward to getting, getting my teeth into and, um, and experiencing. Um, and then, I mean, it's every boy's dream to say the, say the James Bond thing. I know I said it earlier, but I mean, it's a pretty cool idea. Um, but I mean, the overall objective is to, is to hopefully just play a kind of range of things and work with people who, um, who inspire you to, to see things differently, you know? Maybe I don't know right now the kind of role I always want to look for or something like that, but um, you know, I mean, I've been very lucky to have a great run so far. And if you can continue to be lucky and continue working in the industry that I've, you know, been a part of, you know, for a while so far, I think that's a good thing. So uh, we'll see what happens. On James Bond, do you have a favourite James Bond film? I'm a big, big fan of the recent ones as well. I know a lot of people aren't, but um, I really liked Skyfall, um, but I think Casino Royale, the new one, is probably my favourite. And what would be your like James Bond car? It's got to be the Aston, the silver Aston, yeah. Just in the second right there. Um, were you happy or disappointed that Dan was Gossip Girl? <laughs> <laughs> I think we were all like... Can we go now? No. I, yeah, I, I honestly, I was just like, great, okay, cool. Um, no, I, um, I don't know, did it make sense? I've kind of forgotten how it all ended, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I am completely serious. Um, yeah, it really didn't matter to me. As, <laughs> at, at all. If, if it made sense and, it was, and everyone was happy, I'm happy. Um, I know you've already kind of touched upon the fact that you don't really know where the, what the future holds, mm. but have you ever, lots of celebrities kind of are, and actors and actresses are kind of thinking about going into theatre and seem to kind of go to Broadway um, more frequently now. Yeah. Would that be something that you would consider absolutely. going into theatre? Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to. Um, I mean, you see so many amazing productions being put on uh, in the US and, and here, obviously. Incredible, uh, incredible uh, theatre industry. So, yeah, I mean, the obvious answer would be yes. Um, and, I mean, it's, just, it's always just a case of timing, isn't it? I mean, whenever you've, whenever, with what I do, it's, so many pieces have to kind of fit together. Um, and there are always so many external factors. Um, but I think if you, you know, you keep your, keep your eyes and your ears open, as it were, um, the right thing will come along. And I mean, it always has to be the right thing. Um, but yeah, I'd absolutely love to. I'm a big, big fan of theatre. Yeah, just here with the glue, the glasses. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. Obviously, you got your big break on a TV show, but what's your favourite medium to work in, be it film or TV or even stage? Yeah, um, I mean, we were talking a little bit about film. I really like the way you know, the format of that is um, in terms of you can go away for about three months or something like that and throw yourself into it and then it's done at the end and then you get to go and do something, something new. Um, I think the thing that I became a little, uh, what's the word, not disillusioned with, but a little frustrated with, um, with TV, especially um, US TV, I found, was it can be, and it's, it's, I'm not talking bad about US TV because they've just given me a job, so thank you very much. But... Um, is it can feel like a production line a lot of the time, and I completely understand it. You know, you've got a certain number of days to get something finished and then package it and roll it out. Um, but from an artistic point of view, when you want to spend more time working on things and exploring things and exploring themes of the project or whatever like that, it doesn't cater too well towards that. You know, it's kind of walk in, hit your mark, do it and leave. Um, so you really have to, I mean, technically, it really makes you become quite, well, good because you have to be bang on every day um, you know you haven't got the luxury of saying all right let's do this 20 times you know and really spend a day talking about things and did this part work did this part work did this part not work you really kind of have to be there and just you have to also kind of develop the ability to say all right job done and I think what you can do um, 
at least the way I am, you're kind of always thinking about things, or could I have done this differently, or if a painter's painting a picture, could I have just added another stroke there? And you really have to learn the ability to just kind of let things go uh, on a TV show because you're not going to get that opportunity to keep looking at things, to keep doing things over. So, I mean, there are pros and cons to both. Um, but um, I definitely enjoy having the time to explore things more, having the opportunity to discuss the themes of something. And I think film and, you know, theatre as well lend themselves to that a little bit better. Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, um, how do you think social media is redefining our conception of celebrity? Ah, uh, that's very good. I was, um, read a brief thing that Danny Boyle was talking about with regard to his new thing. He was saying people were being reduced to data, um, which, you know, I mean, he was kind of, ref he was talking about it in the, uh, in the regard of things like Tinder and stuff like that. Um, but if we're talking about it in terms of, um, celebrity, you can still kind of apply the same, the same idea. But I mean, it is. I mean, there are people who are forming quite lucrative careers off just being on Instagram or just being on Twitter and being paid through, I don't know, there's loads of people doing the whole like health teas and stuff like that and things like that. So people are doing that and then people kind of get following and through following their for are they celebrity, are they famous, I don't know. I mean, they are, I guess, in a way. Um, but yes, it is absolutely redefining it. It's broadened it, for sure. Um, everyone can be famous, right? Do you have Tinder? No, no. Should I get on it? I hear great things. I hear it's wonderful. What's your favorite social media platform to use? I use Instagram all the time. Um, I think Instagram's wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many things just being kind of, I actually got something that kind of links them all together. But um, yeah, Instagram's great. I mean, picture can say a thousand words, right? And, you know, it, it's, it's good, to, good to share that kind of stuff. Okay, um, the lady just by the door. Um, so in Shally Girls, some of the cast members perform party tricks. Do you have a party trick? I do. I'm uh, really good with a knife, doing the uh, thing between your fingers. I can do it very, very well. When I'm drunk, no, I'm joking. Um, and the lady, uh, right, the second row from the back. Do you want to stand up so Ellen can see where she's going? Hey, um, was fame something that you enjoyed or did you resent it at the beginning? Or I'm sorry, can you say that was again? Was fame something that you enjoyed? Or fame. did you, fame, like, um, or did you resent it at the beginning? Well, I mean, it's because I don't really think of myself in terms of being like famous or not, but I mean, uh, it's a weird thing, it's a weird thing because if, when I think of myself and think of what I do, I'm an actor, that's what I love doing, it's kind of what I've, I mean, it's what I've followed. And as a product of that, some people know who I am, or they th think they know who you are, and so on and so forth. But, um, and I mean, of course, I mean, it definitely appeals to a certain, I don't know, I don't, know if, I don't think it's a desire to be, um, you know, liked or whatever, but I mean, maybe to some degree, I mean, if, if you get a certain amount of attention, maybe you like it. Does it validate me? I don't know. I don't think just people knowing who I am validates me. I'd like to think people have seen um, things that I've put effort into work and uh, therefore like that. Um, it definitely has its perks if you want to get into like a restaurant or something like that. <laughs> um, that's really good. Um, but at times, I mean, it can be really, uh, it has been really um, annoying. I mean, you know, we've all woken up not looking great and I mean, it's not my vanity talking there, it's just like when you want to be just left alone or whatever and you nip out to go get a carton of milk or something. I mean, we, I experienced this a lot when I was in New York when Gossip Girl was at it's like, hi, you know, you just nip out to go and get something and, you know, there's someone taking a photo of you, paparazzi or whatnot, and it's, you know, it's not going to be a flattering picture or it's someone kind of talking about your behaviour badly, like, I got, uh, 
I used, used to get written up in the, uh, in the Daily News for taking a shot of tequila in a bar or something when I was like 22 years old. I mean, who doesn't do that, you know? And, uh, but they paint it in a way that makes it look negative. And there's nothing wrong with that. And um, so in that respect, it can be a bit annoying. But um, all in all, you kind of, you learn to deal with whatever's going on and, you know, nothing lasts forever anyway, so. Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe just with the purple top. Do you want to stand up so I can, yeah. How did you first become interested in acting? Um, you know, I always kind of, I think it probably it was going to pantomimes with my mum when I was a kid. You know, I was always just completely taken back by just the show um, and the performance. And my eyes were bright and wide and I just, just couldn't get enough of it. And um, I think my mum asked me one day if I wanted to go and do that and play around. And I think I went to a, a drama group as a kid, just, you know, just kids messing around and something. And um, I think it was a really wonderful thing, you know. I think it's a great way to incorporate children, um, to encourage creativity, to encourage interaction. Um, so that's what it was for me. And then I think um, that kind of progressed a little bit. And we always went to the theatre and went to musicals, um, you know, with family and stuff. And eventually it kind of died off a bit and I was not really interested at all. And I remember the drama group that I used to go to was on a Saturday morning and our school football team was on a Saturday morning. So I chose the football team. Um, and that went on for a number of years. And then I remember being about 16 and I was like, what do I want to do? Like, what's going on? What? There was something felt a little bit missing. And I think it's because I wasn't really pursuing anything too creative. And that was always something that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and so around 16, I applied to join the National Youth Theatre, who, um, who I can't speak highly enough of. Um, and I went and auditioned and got into them and uh, did all of that. And it kind of just reopened this whole thing that kind of went on as a, went on as a kid. And from there, um, kept following it. And uh, so that's, that's, that's what happened and that's how it came around. But I mean, it's just, a, it's just something in life, you know, that kind of grabs you. I always used to kind of sit on the bus or something like that and people used to go by and you'd be like, I wonder what that person's doing today. I wonder where, wonder where, they're, where they're going. I wonder what's going on in their life. I wonder what they're thinking. And um, maybe I'm just nosy about other people's business. I don't know. But um, it was always something like that. I felt like you could explore and express um, with, with drama. Is sort of exploring the characters your favourite part of acting? I think so. I mean... And it's funny because when you were asking me earlier about, you know, what things relate, what things you relate to and stuff like that, I mean, when you, when you do explore characters enough, you know, you do learn things about yourself, I think. And they might not be immediately conscious or, or whatnot, but, um, but you do. Um, and I think it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's the interesting part of it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you get to really figure, figure it out. And I mean, we are, I mean, humans, we're social beings. You know, um, the most important thing in the world, most of the time, are the other people in it um, and our relationship with them. Um, so I think through doing that, you're kind of figuring out your world around you and maybe figuring out the type of person, type of people that you, uh, that you want to spend your time with also. And you talked about earlier about pantomimes. Which is your favourite? Oh, good question. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. I like Aladdin. Aladdin's always fun. I remember Paul Layla always used to come down and play, the, uh, play Widow Twanky, which was pretty cool. Have you ever been in Aladdin? Have I ever been in it? In my living room as a six-year-old <laughs> many a time. Um, but no, I haven't. And I haven't been in a pantomime, but who knows? Is this something you'd like to do? I think so. <laughs> I, think, I think we might have to do that, yeah. Lady, just that with the sort of baby jumper. Yeah. Um, if you were to be a fruit, what would you be and why? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. If I was a fruit. I'm getting all the weird questions That's today. That's <laughs> so weird. I don't know, I'm trying to personify a fruit in my head and it's like it's such a challenge. Um, 
I don't know. Um, a strawberry? I don't know. I like the colour, you know. The green bit's kind of like a cool hat, I guess. <laughs> and they're sweet and around in the summertime, which is the best time of year. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Ellen, just here in the second row. Um, hey, so uh, what are you doing afterwards? <laughs> What I'm are we doing? I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Completely open. Or I'm not joking. If, like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Yeah, just there in the third row. Uh, no, just to the, to the right, yeah. Thank you. Um, so a few people have mentioned that Chuck Bass was like a bad guy. Um, I was just wondering to what extent there were discussions about a responsibility that you might have or the team might have when portraying certain storylines, um, the glamorizing of a certain kind of lifestyle, like I'm thinking of uh, when Chuck forces himself on Jenny in the first season, if there yeah. were what the process was in terms of discussing those elements of the character. Um, it's a good question. I think that, you know, with a show like that, um, something that's on network television, there's so many powers that be, you know, so many politics involved. Um, so I feel like the short answer is we didn't get a lot of say. I mean, this is something that's been decided when they submit a script to the network um, and they come back and they say, right, you can do this, you can't do this, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's it, kind of, we don't make the decisions. Of course, you have your own feelings about something. Um, and I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's the, the, the part where, uh, where Chuck forced himself on Jenny was, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a serious issue, you know? Um, and a lot of the time as well, like with the... I mean, the thing is, I, for example, there's a, there a lot of drug scenes that kind of get cut out. Um, and I remember this one thing that was kind of outrageous. It was just like, it was Chuck out of his mind or whatever, a table full of drugs. And I was like, there's no way you can shoot this, right? And it was another thing that's kind of, the way things are set up in terms of the set and then what's actually shown are always going to be very different. Um, but no, I mean, you do feel a certain um, responsibility, yes, about kind of what people are going to see and how they're going to portray certain issues. But I always felt safe knowing that we would do it in a, or the show would do it in a proper way because we had great people involved. I mean, with Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage, who had done the OC previously, they had experience with um, putting together a show that caters towards a younger, younger audience. Um, so with that in mind, you kind of like, all right, they're not going to, you know, do things too, too, too badly. But, um, but I mean, it is an interesting thing, you know. I mean, you do have to be careful what you, what you say or do. I mean, Chuck's a diff difficult one because he kind of, he did a lot of bad things, but then at times kind of had these really redeeming moments. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of, you, I don't know, do people love him or hate him or hate certain things about him. I mean, he's, he's a very interesting character for me to play in that way because we got to experience and, you know, sorry, explore a lot of different things. But yeah, you do, um, you've got to be careful. Okay, um, and just there, the lady just in the sort of fourth row. Hi. Um, do you think th that the producers of, of uh, the producers of Gossip Girl had any kind of doubts about you playing the role of Chuck, just because you were British in a way, or was the American accent like second nature? Um, I don't know. I mean, they hired me straight away, which is great. No, um, I don't know. The strange thing was when they were doing the auditions at the start, um, they were kind of like saying everyone just come in and read for both roles if you want. So I read for Chase's part as well, which um, I'm, glad, uh, I'm glad the other one worked out for me. But um, <laughs> um, I don't know if Chase read for Chuck as well. It's kind of strange picture in Chase Crawford play Chuck Burst, that's quite weird. Um, but um, no, I mean, they were very supportive from the get-go. You know, I had a strong idea of how I wanted to do it. Um, and I gave it a shot and it, it worked out, you know. I mean, the only worrying thing was at the time I didn't have a US visa. So there was, there was some, which, you know, you're not supposed to be in the country auditioning if you don't have papers, but, oh well, that was then. And, um, 
but yeah, it was, uh, I remember the day before we started filming, I was in Toronto picking up a visa. Um, and there was a lot of kind of panic because they'd obviously, um, I was their choice. There was no one else around. This is it. We've got to get him, get his visa and get him back. And uh, there was a snowstorm. So I was trapped in, where was I trapped? I think I flew from Toronto to Baltimore. And I was trapped there for a bit and finally got on a plane and finally got back to New York and we started shooting pretty much straight away. So it was a bit of a mad dash. I think that was the only, I think it was the only worry. But, um, but no, the, uh, the accent thing luckily, uh, uh, you know, worked. Was that the hardest part about the character, to get into it to start with, the accent? Not really. I had this vision of how I wanted him to sound. I mean, his voice changed anyway. Um, throughout the, uh, the duration of the, uh, or the life of the show. But um, no, I just had this image, you know, and I, I've, I've always referenced um, the film The Talented Mr. Ripley and um, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character in it. And he just had this just bored, snobby way of speaking and it just kind of felt like the right fit. And um, that's what I went with. Okay, um, just behind uh, the lady. Hi, Ed. Um, so I have two completely unrelated questions. Okay. Okay. One is um, you talked a little bit about people being important and who you surround yourself with. So who makes up your support system to kind of deal with the fluctuations of fame, mm. celebrity? And the second question is you mentioned Jamaica, but do you have any recommendations or places you love uh, that you went on a personal holiday completely unrelated to work? Sorry, what was the last part of the second oh, question? The place that, you, that you've been to for a personal holiday, completely unrelated to work. I'm sure you travel a lot for work, but you've mentioned Jamaica, but where do you, like, recommendation or somewhere you love that you've been on just for yourself? Wow. Um, first question. So what's the first question? Um, I have a really, really good family. We're a really, really tight knit unit. Um, plenty of love and support and uh, jokes when you need them. Um, I also have a, uh, you know, so that's, that's a very, very important part to me, you know, the ability to kind of get on the phone with the people who know you best, um, whether you're having a great day or a bad day, that's, that's essential. Um, and the same, the same goes for my friends. I've kind of always wished that I had a, uh, a little bit more of a mentor in life. Um, you know, my father was an amazing man, fantastic, but, you know, you look for a different as I say, like a different kind of role model at times or whatnot. Um, and potentially maybe that's something I, you know, would have, uh, would have looked for more. Um, but I have had the opportunity of meeting and being friends with some, some incredible, uh, incredible people. But um, to answer the second bit, um, personal holidays. I mean, Jamaica is a personal place. I mean, that's where my personal holidays have been spent. But um, I mean, there's so much... So many places I'd like to go. I mean, Barcelona's fantastic. I mean, Paris is fantastic. I mean, the list, the list is endless. I mean, it's difficult to, uh, to choose one. I mean, I've been blessed enough to, to, to have traveled the world for work and been able to do it for, for leisure. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, every place has its own thing. Okay, we do just have time for only a couple more questions. Um, so the lady right at the back, in the back corner there, with the scarf. <coughs> After hugely successful dramas like The O.C. and Gossip Girl, do you think there's still scope for a hugely successful American teen drama in the future? Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, I think throughout civilization, in fact, you know, we've kind of seen the same themes recycled, right? I mean, we all go through the same stuff, you know, albeit slightly differently, depending on whether or not you've got letters to write or text messages to send or whatever it is, you know. As we progress, everything does change and adapt, but I mean, at the heart of it, I feel like things are pretty much the same. So, you know, the people that are going to be sitting in this room in 20 years if the building's still standing. Um, 
you know, might be having the same discussion. They might be sitting here with someone else who's done something on some hologram platform where it's been, you know, where it relates to the same stuff that teens deal with um, these days. So I think, yes, of course. Um, that being said, I do hope that um, in the arts and in entertainment in general, that we are able to conjure up new storylines um, and have new original content, you know, and I think that's one of the challenges that we face, especially in, a, in an age where things are so commercially driven. Um, you know, reality TV is so popular right now because, well, I don't know, but it's very popular, but, um, you know, where things are kind of a formula where, you know, they get an audience in, it appears to be working, and therefore it's going to generate ad, 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 sort of revenue for, from uh, advertisements. It's like people aren't really encouraged or inclined to change it, you know, but as I say, I hope that um, that, that kind of changes to some degree and we see more and more new quality programming, quality uh, stuff out there. Thank you. Um, and the uh, lady just on the front row, just that one. So you lived in New York, you say, for you know six years while you were filming Gossip Girl. How accurate do you think some of what happens in Gossip Girl is to life on the Upper East Side for kids around that age? Um, well, I never lived it, so it would be incredibly difficult for me to tell you what life on the Upper East Side for teenagers or late teens is like. I don't know. Um, I didn't go to one of those schools. Um, my life was... My schooling was very, very different. Um, so it's difficult for me to say, but I will say that a lot of the people that I met during it said that it was pretty accurate to a degree. Now, I don't know whether they were trying to impress me, which is what it might have been, because um, it, it is pretty impressive if that's what they were up to. But I mean, to a certain degree, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they could relate to it, and I'm sure it was, um, you know, some of it spoke to them. But I mean, you have to, you have to bear in mind that it was a television show that was there for entertainment purposes and obviously it was a heightened sense of, uh, of whatever it was, reality or whatever you, want to, whatever you want to call it, a heightened sense of their reality possibly. Um, so, you know, I mean, it might have been, but, you know, you'd have to ask the, uh, the guy who's from there and that's not me. We have time for one last question. I can go to the lady in the second row there. Um, from a few of the things you said about wanting to be a rock star, and obviously you're very thoughtful and kind and outrageously good looking, <laughs> are there actually any differences between you and Johnny from Shallow Girl? Is there any was it difference? Yeah. Ah, uh, um, yeah, I don't take, I've never been heli skiing. You yeah, know, that would be pretty fun. Um, I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe, because that's, that's what he wanted to do. But um, no, I mean, look, I think. I think there's something incredibly attractive about being uh, outlandish and playing a guitar pretty well. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's maybe where that comes from, but not to be. But um, no, I mean, again, maybe that's the only thing. There's a little part of me that maybe wanted to do that, but I'm pretty happy kind of doing what I'm doing right now. And I'm having a lot of fun. I'm, I think it's good to be scared, which I am a lot of the time as well with this. I mean, it's. It's part of living life, you know. I think it's a good thing to, uh, to have that. I'm excited. Um, and I don't ever really want to know exactly what's going to happen. And I feel like that's where I am right now. And I think that's the way to live life. Thank you. Unfortunately, that is all we have time for today. Thank you very um, much. But I'm sure everyone would like to join me in thanking you very much for Thank coming. You. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah.